yeah. So if you like the FX3, you're gonna like this camera. So go buy it, end of review. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you next time, bye. Well, uh, you know what, after all, I guess there is probably a bit more we should say about the FX30. But before we get into that, I'd like to say something about the FX3. For the last year and a bit here at the channel, we've been making our videos mainly with the FX3 as our A or B cam. I actually really enjoy using this camera. It has some great features and is really easy to use. It's incredible how far digital film and video cameras have come in the last 10 years. The latest release from Sony is the FX30. It's a new Super 35 APS-C mirrorless camera in their Cine line. The first Sony camera I actually used full time as a video creator was the a7S II and this camera honestly blows that one completely out of the water. At a glance, there are barely any differences physically between the FX30 and the FX3. It's not until you take off the body cap and you see this FX30 smaller Super 35 slash APS-C Exmor R CMOS sensor that you start to see more of the differences. It is a full-fledged APS-C uh, Super 35 sensor. That means that you're not going to have to be cropping in like you would with a full-frame camera to get the use of Super 35 mil lenses or APS-C style lenses. With the FX30 having a smaller sensor, Sony has released three new APS-C lenses to accompany it. They are the E 10 to 20 millimeter f4 PZG the E 15mm f1.4 G and the ultra wide prime the E 11mm f1.8. These lenses are super light and help the FX30 to be one of the easiest cameras I've ever used to balance on a gimbal. Even with a heavier lens like the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 art, you can see that it's still not really that big of an issue. So the FX3 was already largely talked about as a great B cam to the FX6 and I would say that because the FX30 is just about half the price of the FX3, this makes it even more attractive to people who would be using it as a B camera or say like a crash camera or a helmet camera. I didn't really notice too much of a difference between my FX30 footage and the FX3 footage that I've been shooting for a couple months now. One of the main things you'll notice is that with the FX30 is that everything is punched in compared to the FX3 and this is to be expected as Super 35 sensors or APS-C sensors are typically around 1.4 to 1.6 times cropped in on what 35 millimeter shows. This means you'll have to use wider focal lengths to achieve the same framing. The same full frame 35 millimeter lens on the FX3 would look like a 55 millimeter lens on the APS-C FX30. So who's this camera for? Well, I would say that it's for a multitude of people, actually. It's got a lot of great different use cases that it would be really well suited to. Being just under half the price of the FX3 makes it attractive to professionals who need options and beginners who want a camera that is relatively accessible but has features that they can practice with and become a better videographer or even filmmakers with. Also, because of its size and its killer autofocus with E-mount lenses, it's great for vlogging and self-recording. Let's test it out in some of those types of situations. Situations. All right, so we're walking through this whole place and we're on full auto, seeing how it goes. It's gonna constantly switch modes as we walk throughout the place, so we'll see, how, see what's going on. Currently using the power zoom 18 to 105 Sony lens, uh, and we've got that on auto as well, uh, currently at 18 mil. Uh, it's not a crop sensor lens like what should be being used with this camera but it's a full frame lens and it's still in my opinion working crazy good. Okay let's check it out we're gonna go get some food now I think we're gonna grab some pea meal bacon sandwiches and then help uh, Dale out with his tests. Just a you know bit of behind the scenes of how the magic of VizTech happens. Look at the steam coming off that. Oh yeah. Let's go see how scared we can make these birds. Okay, so now you've seen what it looks like from a very beginner fully automatic 
viewpoint. So now that we've seen that, we can get into something that will show a bit more of the nitty gritty of what this camera's capable of. Its price point puts it directly in competition with cameras such as the Blackmagic Pocket 6K and the Panasonic GH6. All three can shoot log footage in 10-bit 422, but that's where a lot of the differences begin to appear, especially in ergonomics and like physically how you interact with the camera. The use case for the FX3 and the Pocket 6K are video first cameras, while the GH6 is more of what we've come to expect from mirrorless cameras of today. It's equally video and photo. Both the FX3 and the Pocket 6K will take photos, but you should know that buying them for photo work is probably a misstep. So this is something to consider if you do both video and photo work. It is capable of shooting all the same frame rates, codecs, and image qualities as the FX3. It's just obviously gonna be a little bit more punched in because it's APS-C. And you can also still do the same output via HDMI to our external RAW recorder. So let's do a quick comparison of the FX30 to the Pocket 6K, the GH6, and the FX3. I'm gonna do all of these tests with the Canon EF 24mm f1.4L. I chose this lens because it was the easiest to fit on all three different camera formats. Now, none of these cameras have exactly the same sensor size and three of the four are being adapted to EF, so none of these frame sizes are gonna exactly be one-to-one. -one. I'll be honest with you, it's kind of interesting doing these tests as I've actually never used a Panasonic GH6 or a Blackmagic Pocket 6K, so it's been an interesting learning experience for me, grading B-RAW and V-Log for the first time. Having a camera that allows you to experiment, um, I think that's really important for people who are just beginning to be able to get their hands on equipment to actually be able to practice the skills to further themselves. Uh, to challenge myself in this way, I quickly wrote a treatment and a shot list and asked a friend if I could have him as an actor and use his house as a set. I brought uh, one bicolor light, the Amaran 60X, that was available to me in the studio and a couple other lenses that I had uh, rented from a rental department at the time. So I packed everything up, went over to his house and shot this little sequence. And I think one of the things to take away from it is that even though this footage isn't incredible, it did actually serve its purpose in being a camera that allowed me to make something that I wanted to really fast and without a ton of stress. And it's after seeing this footage, I've now gone back and rewrote my treatment and turned it into like a short film about a man who's obsessed uh, about like gnomes and gnome culture. Think about something in the vein of Black Mirror, but it's about someone who's obsessed with gnomes. So having shot that little piece with the FX30 was inspiring enough that it got me into writing something else, which then I want to shoot with maybe bigger cameras or have the FX30 as, again, the gimbal camera that we use. I just do more takes and get more experience with gimbal. So in terms of ergonomics, it is literally the same body as the FX3. So if you've bought accessories for the FX3, the FX30 is gonna go directly into those accessories. You don't have to buy all new cages or, or supports for that camera. They are identical physically. The main grip feels solid and is easy to hold for extended periods of time. And the top handle makes it way more easy to get smooth walking shots while handheld. I would recommend though using a heavier lens or adding weight when shooting handheld with this camera as it honestly is too light to do proper handheld work. Um, having a heavier lens will allow you to be more smooth with your movements and not create any up and down or like side to side little shakes. It makes the whole action a lot more smooth. Another great feature of the FX30 is that it can become a great webcam or live streaming camera. When connected to USB-C, you can get frame rates up to 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. It can also back up that same feed up to SD card internally. While connected to your streaming app of choice, you can still get access to all of the autofocus and asynotone features of the camera, so it's gonna look great and you never have to worry about whether you're gonna be in focus or not. I don't think you can get better looking webcam footage than what is coming out of this camera. For sure a good way to present yourself in a more professional way. Another interesting point to add is that you can utilize timecode with this camera through the USB-C port with a USB to BNC adapter. I gotta say, anyone who thinks that this camera isn't a professional level camera is just being silly. I, and the only real reason I would say this is because certain people don't uh, recognize that APS-C is not just for beginners, it is also a professional format. I think we all get this bad taste of APS-C when we first start doing photo or video in that typically the first camera that you get is gonna be kind of a crappy APS-C camera. So it's unfair to compare 
a be truly beginner's level of APS-C style camera to a legitimately professional's style of APS-C. For instance, I can put the camera in full auto and it will get footage that's at the very worst on par with a cell phone, but if you spend the time, you can match it up to much more pricey cameras like the FX6 or the FX9 or the Sony Venice. Like, it's definitely possible. They all use the same color science. And it's like Super 35 is considered an industry standard still, so it, it's kind of silly to not consider APS-C in the same light. The only reason to me to get an FX3 over an FX30 is because it's full frame and you can just use all full frame lenses the way that they're intended to work. Luckily, this is VizTech and we do have a wonderful rentals department. So if you are on the fence between either, you could come into us and rent the FX30 or you can come into us and rent the FX3 or you can rent them both at the same time, pair them up, do your own tests. We're living in probably the greatest time ever to be an independent content maker. So whether you're intending to get into real estate, weddings, like commercials, cinematography, or streaming content, this camera can work in all those applications. So uh, for the FX30 and anything else you've seen in the video today, please check viztech.ca out. Thanks a lot and have a good one.